Hey everyone, welcome to this video. Today I wanted to talk about a software that I've come across. It's a plugin for DaVinci Resolve that solves a big problem that I've had for a long time and that's um, creating that film look, um, especially with the grain and the halation um, and the things that you can't natively get in DaVinci. Um, so this company came um, uh, came forward to me a while ago, um, probably nearly a year ago, but unfortunately at the time that they um, chatted to me, I just switched back to Premiere. So, um, you know, our contact was lost for a bit. And now that I'm back on DaVinci, um, uh, we've been in touch again and they've offered me the plugin so that I can do a video on it and show you what it's like. So yeah, I might um, flip probably to the screen and just do a audio recording as you watch me do different things with it. I'll run you through some of the features. And um, as you can probably see, this video is changing um, as I'm showing you sort of different looks that you can get from it. And yeah, let's do that. Um, what else can I tell you before we flip? Yeah, no, that's it. That's all I've got to cover. So. Um, let's go to the computer now and I'll show you some of the effects. See you there. Here we are inside DaVinci Resolve. I'm using DaVinci's Resolve 18 Studio, just for reference, and I'm using Dehancer Pro 532. So the way Dehancer works is you go to the website, download the plugin and install it on your computer, and then you it becomes part of the library inside here in the color tab. And all you need to do is just go up to effects and then drag it onto your node. Uh, they advise to put the Dehancer at the end of your color chain here. So to go on the last window. And I'll just drag it on to show you. If you have a look at the picture as I drop it, it will change. So it immediately applies some of the settings which you can turn on and off as you wish. And just to mention the Plugin comes with a really good manual that explains all of the different settings that I'll go through in more detail. I'll just briefly touch on them to give you an idea of what this plugin can do. But this the the manual explains everything in a lot of detail and references actual film and how they came up with all these settings. It's really, really quite detailed and just an excellent software. I haven't found anything better at this stage to replicate the film look. And I'll leave the links to the software and the manual, etc., in the description below. So the first part of the Hansa is just to let it know what kind of footage is coming in. And I'm working in the DaVinci Wide Gamut Intermediate Color Space. So I'll just set that and I don't need to put any of this in because it takes care of that. But if you are working in a different color space, you can import the vendor of your camera, the, the, the camera that you have, the format, etc. The first part here, just very basic color adjustments and tint adjustments and the fringing. Most of this should already be done in a window prior to working with Dehancer because you want the footage to be as neutral as possible before you start working with Dehancer. So most of these basic settings don't need to be adjusted in here. You're just doing the actual film look in here. So moving down to the next section, this is the Hansa's heart and soul, the film profiles that you can choose. And I'll just click on here. It defaults to this Kodak Vision 3, but you can choose any of these. I'll just scroll right up so you can see the different options here and I'll scroll through. You can stop the video if you want to have a look at these um, uh, at your time. And you can see there's quite a few here and they're some of the most popular stocks of film. And to choose them, you just simply click on them and the screen will flick to it. And it's as easy as just choosing a look by going through whichever one you like. I'll go back to the Kodak Vision 3. But at the end of the video, I'll do a couple of different clips with different effects from here so that you can see how it actually looks in motion. But I'll, I'll, for, for the time being, I'll just go through these categories so that you can see the different options that are available. So in that film stock, you can also push and pull the film two stops to whatever you prefer. And as with uh, the category above with the enable button there, 
each section has an enable button so you can easily just turn that feature off or turn it back on again and each section has that sort of button so you could use the hands adjust for film turn everything off or you can have a number of different effects going just with a click of this tick box so next we have the expand section where you can set your black point or change your black point and your white point there's a color mode here luma and enable disable as well so you can see if i turn that off it uh, stops taking in the input from whatever i put in there you've got your print section here you've got linear profile and several others um, as well as quite a few settings here as including the analog, analog range limiter which gives you sort of the softer bit of a softer look and you've got your color head here as well so you can change those and they work pretty well it's very quick um, I haven't found any issues while changing any of these settings and moving down to my next favorite section film grain so the Hansa is really known for this because of the way they've designed it most film grains are just overlays in video and they don't look that good you can sort of see that there's you know something on top of the actual footage the thing with the Hansa is that the grain is actually baked into the image so it looks much more realistic and I'd say it's the best grain I've seen out there in terms of video so really really strong feature of of the plugin not only have you got the film profile but you've also got the grain which is film is really known for that as well and you've got a lot of different options here if you look at the image you can see the size of the grain as well as the amount changing and then you've got a lot of different settings here you can specify where you want more or less of it etc and again just disabling or enabling with the button and you've got also I'll just click on these so you can see what's in there different types of film positive and negative and different modes analog and digital the next two sections are again probably the other two that I really really like and that's halation and bloom so these work better with the with light so I'll just skip on to the next um, shot so that we can see them a little bit better and I will turn the timeline off so that we've got more space so I'll just drag that back on there and again just putting intermediate and we've got our film clip and I'll scroll down to halation and then we'll do a little bit of tweaking so first we'll enable and then we'll just do a little bit of local and global diffusion I'll amplify that a little bit too and you can see that there's a lot of if I turn that on and off you can see the big big difference it's made to the light so it's bringing out that orangey red glow around the lights uh, the halos and um, the edges so that you can also change the the hue a little bit and the blue compensation so you can see you can see you can sort of get it towards the pink side or more to the orange however you like and down to bloom I'll just turn that on as well and you can see that those lights are more sort of glowy so bloom gives that sort of glowy effect to the lights I'll just turn off the halation so that you can see just the bloom and often in film they're used together so you would pro you would use I normally use both at the same time so you can see the the look there just by turning those two off how much if you have a look at this picture while I turn them on so here comes the halation and then the bloom it, it's changing the picture a lot and of course they're probably a little bit overdone I'm trying to make them a little bit bigger so you can see the effects but we can turn uh, these things all down um, to much smaller if if we want so I'll just do a little bit less yeah, so there's a lot of customization in here and it's just brilliant I've, I've never seen any software that can do so much changes within just the one setting uh, to do with film scrolling further down you've got the vignette um, which self-explanatory you can have your different size I forgot to enable but yeah there we go and the different exposure so just like a normal vignette you can have your feathering etc and then we scroll down to film breath and gate weave so film breath is 
the little changes that happen from frame to frame in terms of exposure, contrast and colour as the fr- as the film moves through a camera. And film, and again, gate weave is the movement or the swinging of the film strip while it is being pulled through the frame window in the camera. So both of those effects just give you that little bit more of a realistic film look that makes it... F- takes the digital image to make it feel like it is actually being filmed on film so there is slight little errors if you like inside (laughs) the filming which is sort of what the old uh, analog way was you know it wasn't perfect and that's what we're trying to achieve with this film look so these are also really really cool effects that I haven't seen um, added into a plugin like this with so many different features in the one and just going further down uh, into the end of the plugin here You've got false color, just very simple. Turning that on and off gives you your false colors here so you can see what your exposure is like. Easy to turn on and off and you could use that just on its own if you wanted to on a node. And you've got your output here. So this controls how much of the effects are taking place uh, in total. So you can, if you put that to zero, there is no effects. And then if we turn up to 100, it's all the way and you can have it anywhere in between. And the LUT generator, you can make a LUT out of what you've just made. And they come in different, you can make them in different sizes. And the last bit here is just how efficiently you want the handset to run. So I normally set it to normal fast, but you can have it uh, on high and slow with for very intricate work where you need a lot of detail. So that brings us to the end of the going through this plugin. I hope that was helpful. It was sort of just a rough look. But I wanted just to show you all the things that you can do in there. And once you have it installed, there's a lot to play around with and change. And you can really tailor your film to the way you want it to look. Uh, It's quite an incredible plugin. I'm really surprised that so many features are banked into one. So I hope that was helpful. Yeah, I'll leave the details for the Hansa down below. Their website is just thehansa.com if you want to visit there and have a look. And I will see you in the next video. If you enjoyed this one, leave a thumbs up and subscribe if you like. And I will chat to you in the next one. Thanks for listening. Bye.